<clears throat> welcome everyone welcome good morning good afternoon uh, good evening and uh, depending on where you are watching right now and um, what time you are watching uh, today is a uh, is the Sabbath September 19 2020 and it is the Sabbath of the Lord and uh, today we are going to 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 look at a topic that is uh, I would say very prevalent uh, people have different opinions about it, mm. but the the way it should be is, what does the Bible say about it? And so, um, I'm gonna present it today because I, it's I think it's it's need it needs to be um, brought to light. Uh, it doesn't mean everyone's going to agree. But uh, it it never hurts to study God's word. Uh, this message I preached it one uh, I preached it twice before. One time I preached it with the with the version that I think that is wrong that the that the church has been teaching and um, and I'm gonna explain before I start. Um, and so, but then the second time I preached it, I preached it the right way, which I have found what the Bible is preaching or is teaching. And so today I'm going to bring it out to everyone else, um, to those that have contradictory views or the similar views that we, all of us should take the Bible and study for ourselves to see whether um, what the Bible is teaching is exactly what I'm teaching or if I'm teaching contrary to what the Bible says. And of course, we're going to look at some other version. Uh, and I only trust two versions of the Bible, the KJV and the GNV. KJV is the King James Version. The GNV is the Geneva, uh, Geneva Version, basically. And so... We're gonna get right into it. Um, okay, that was not supposed to be. I think I up. Oh, yep, I, I hit the wrong one. It's this one. I hit the wrong one. There we go. There we go. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, we're going to talk about the rapture, taken or left, um, taken or left. And uh, the first time I preached it was, no, the second time I preached it actually was October 26, 2019. And today is going to be the third time. And this time, probably my final time, hopefully, where I'm going to bring it to everyone here. Um, so the question is taken or left, uh, the rapture, we know this, uh, this has made uh, a lot of dis disagreements over the, the topic of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm, some people believe there's a rapture, which is nothing wrong with the rapture, the term, but, um, some believe that um, we should be taken some say we should be left and the reason is because they say hey, if you are taken then you can be taken away with the Lord and you don't want to be left behind right and somebody says no you want to be you don't want to be taken because if you are taken you are the ones that were taken away by with the flood because the flood took them, and so they, they see that word took with the word taken, so you don't want to be taken, but you want to be left alive, because Noah was left alive. And today we're going to see 
whether it is true or not if you're gonna be taken or if you're gonna be left um now let us start with uh so uh, how are we going to study this topic um there is a, i'm gonna have to shrink this one up so you guys can see so and throughout the time throughout the time i'm gonna be i'm gonna be turn um, switching my camera to other places so you can see what i'm reading oh. so how are we going to study this topic we're going to look at it in two ways we're going to compare spiritual things with spiritual things and that's in first corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 to verse 13 and we're gonna look at line upon line precept upon precept and this is what the text says for both of them so comparing spiritual things with spiritual things or he says in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 to verse 13 but god has revealed unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god which things also we speak not in the words which men's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So how do we study the Bible? The way that the Holy Spirit teaches, which is comparing spiritual things with spirituals. Meaning comparing the text with text and see what the context says about what you're trying to understand. The second way of studying it is, as well, line upon line and precept upon precept from Isaiah chapter 28, from verse 9 through verse 13. And it says, Whom shall, shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So people that are no longer in... Um, breastfeeding basically in a sense or in this case spiritually speaking those that are newly um, Bible students that have gone through the first stage and are all ready to receive meat for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little for which for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear but the word of the lord was unto them precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken now now that we know how we are going to study this topic let us get into the topic and the topic is left or taken okay so ah, let's start i'm going to start with this there are many protestant churches where the pastors talk about a secret rapture now question is have you guys heard this something like this before have you guys heard of a secret rapture um and and what it what it what it is is what it is is um uh, we have that false narrative of Jesus is going to come, take the the people, his people, 
secretly and then there's gonna be a, th uh, a, a seven year period or a thousand years period where you can actually change and then when it comes after a thousand years then it's gonna take the rest and uh, or there's a I think what there's a seven year tribulation something like that I'm like where does that say in the Bible because uh, I couldn't find it which I don't take it is there anyways but people do believe in that secret rapture thing and I don't know how it is a secret because because when the day of the Lord which is when Christ comes the second time the day of the Lord is tell, is told us by Peter in the book of second Peter chapter 3 verse number 10 but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night there we go this is why it is a secret rupture because the Lord is coming as a thief in the night but what people do is they don't read the rest of the of the of the, of the verse they just stop right there which is wrong which is misleading people why because the word the rest of the other of the verse says in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the element shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up now imagine so interesting we have we have wildfires in california right but the whole world knows about it so now how could the earth be burning up and it's a secret that makes no sense at all did you guys catch that it makes no sense at all and so the idea of a secret rapture and plus we're gonna see again in the different now because we're gonna be comparing scripture with scripture we're gonna see again why this is a false teaching the secret rapture yes as a thief in the night doesn't mean nobody knows it simply means it catches you unaware not watching when the thief comes into your house you know when he comes you know what you don't know is what time he's coming because the moment he breaks into your house you're gonna know he catches you unaware that's why he comes as a thief you just don't know when he's coming but he came same for Jesus Christ he's coming we don't know when so if you're not watching then when he comes to you he's coming as a thief because you won't know when the one is coming okay so let's move on because we have to talk about that part now all right and here's another reason why the, you can't tell me it's gonna be a, 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 a it's gonna be a uh, secret rupture right Matthew 24 verse 37 verse 41 but as in the days of Noah were so shall this the coming of the Son of Man be for in the day for as in the days of that were before the flood they were eating and drinking are we now eating and drinking yes marrying and giving in marriage are we also doing that yes until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be then shall be two then 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 shall two be in the field the one shall be taken and the other one left two women shall be grinding at the mill the one shall be taken and the other one left so in the days of noah did the people know when the flood came no at least they didn't know what time was coming no but when it came, was it a secret? No, it wasn't a secret. Everybody saw it. Everybody saw Noah building the ark. People came from other places to see because it was on the mountain. And and and, and when the flood came, when when it started to rain, did it was it hmm. You remember before the before 
during the flood there was only one land and one sea it was after the Bab- after the tower of Babel that God separated the the earth the land yes so before that everything was in one place so there is no way it would rain and nobody would know so the idea of secret rupture doesn't make any sense it is not biblical Satan wants to make sure people believe in the secret rapture so they do not take the chance to receive Christ right now but until it is too late Basically, we are a bunch of Christians that are walking as atheists. Only until until they see, they believe, in a sense. And so, now, now we've got that part out of the way. Um, and uh, the one thing, there's another thing that people actually uh, actually talk about to to say that well um to to uh to justify the secret rupture right they try to justify the secret rupture they they want they try to justify the secret rupture and the way they do it is by looking at Matthew twenty four right and it says this it says this Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Interesting. If the sun is darkened, um, who would not see it? Would that be secret? No, it's not a secret anyways. And the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. There was a 1955. Was it 1950 or 1980? I can't remember exactly the date. Where where, where stars fell. And it was recorded. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew it. Right? And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribe of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the of the heaven to the other end, or to the other. And so, what what we do is, when he shall appear in Mark twenty four is not the same as when he is revealed in Luke 17. Why? Because, I don't know. Why actually? That's the question. Why do they say that? Oh yes, they say it because in Matthew 24 and Luke 17, they are describing two different things. Well, let's actually see if this is the case. Luke 17. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be so shall it be in the days of the son of man they did eat they drunk they married wives they were given in marriage until the Noah entered the, uh, entered the into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all so still right here nothing here is secret you can see that so far here nothing here is secret because if you compare with the with the days of Noah, everybody saw what happened, but most of them died. So there wasn't any secret. Likewise, also as it is in the days of of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and they shot them all. Still, again, nothing here is secret. Everything is revealed. I already saw what happened. Even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. Uh oh. Oh, so Mario, here it is. You see? Here, the Son of Man is revealed. And in Matthew, he says he shall appear. 
in that day he which shall be on the housetop and his stuff in the house let him not come down to take it away and he that is in the field let him likewise not return back so in both in both cases Luke 17 and Mark 24 everything is known there is no secret but as soon as we get to the part where the Son of Man is, uh, shall come or shall appear or is revealed then that's a secret that's not a secret they are describing the same event in different ways yes we have two accounts one in my of the same event one in Matthew one in in a uh, in a uh, in Luke actually in Luke 26 is what Matthew 24 verse 37 started with the days of Noah the 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 whole things of Matthew 24 and Luke 17 are the same thing just in different ways there is no such thing as he or because he is revealed here and he shall appear on the other one means it's two different uh, it's two different um, settings or it's two different what am I looking for uh, two different occasions it's not it's the same occasion it's the same thing just in different ways I hope you understand that part and no there is no such thing as a secret rapture because we know that when Christ comes to Kyoto, when, when he comes people are going to be uh, alive and they, they will be calling the mountains to fall upon them to, to, to hide them from the wrath of the lamb that on the, on the throne so that's not a secret they're going to see him coming and they're going to call the mountains and the rocks to fall upon them because they don't want to see that so there's nothing secret if you see something makes sense right that that is i don't know how to think that but that is totally wrong now now and here's another one again of how it cannot be a secret in the book of first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 or verse 13 to verse 17 where it says paul speaking but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye suffer not as even as even as others which have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god god bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent them which are asleep for the lord will will well, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Okay, that's the first thing. He is descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. The archangel basically means the chief of the angel, which is Jesus Christ, and with the trump of God. And so, unless trumpets are no longer loud, then I don't know what that trumpet actually or the trump is here. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. There is nothing secret here. Oh, by the way, don't forget that all the passages I talk about, um, I'm not going to quote it, I'm just going to paraphrase it. When, the, when, when, Jesus, when Jesus comes again, the 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 saint will go up to meet him while the wicked perish that's why i mentioned that the wicked were calling the mountains to fall upon them to hide them from the face of the lamb that's upon the throne and the wrath of god they are going to be asking death to come to them because they don't wanna they they, they cannot behold what they are seeing so there is no such thing as 
secret over here. No secret at all. No. 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 The secret of the steward is revealed. The, the word here in a strong concordance is, the, the number is 601. It, it, the word is apocalypto, which means to uncover, to reveal. Okay, it's to reveal. So there's nothing secret right here. Uh, it, it means to uncover, to reveal, to bring to light. And because Luke's, uh, Matthew 24 and Luke 17 are talking about the same event, same event, then Charles Pierre, which is 5316, also means the same thing. Actually, it means the same thing. I mean, you wouldn't have to go to the Greek to know that um, the word appear means to appear. That would be not right to do right, but I'm still going to give you the word. And the word means um, final. Final. Now. Now. We we, we already um, talk about the, the secret orchestra part. Now. A simple important question yet not understood. Not understood one is to be taken or left. Hmm. Here's the question. To be taken or to be left. Now, um, in this message now, the first part right here was to everyone. And this one is specifically to my fellow people, Seventh-day Adventists. Um, <laughs> the what 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 I, what I see is we have tried to distance ourselves from the world when it comes to preaching this message of Matthew twenty four and Luke seventeen, because the the popular beliefs is um, left behind and taken away, right? Okay. That's a popular belief. And what we do as Seventh-day Adventists is because the majority of the world will be wrong, then we need to be in a different... We need to present that part differently. And what we do is we just turn the Bible upside down. And instead of studying the Bible, we just make our interpretation to be against what is popular. Or mainstream media is preaching because of course they've written books about it they've made movies about it not to be left behind or but to be taken away and I think both of them are wrong why do I say that I say that because if you did not study well, not both of them are wrong one of them is wrong it's either we are wrong or they are wrong or it's either we are right or they are right. Who's right? I'm going to see what the Bible says. And I'm going to see what it tells us to do. And we're going to see today whether we want to be taken or left. And I know last week I heard um, uh, a pastor, uh, a Seventh-day Adventist pastor that actually I really admire him. I saw him uh, back in 2013, I think, when he came to Swahu, to Southwestern Adventist University. And I brought a, he came to be, to be the, uh, uh, a topic on the, on the sanctuary. And I talked to him after that, actually. And I, I've been watching some of his videos. And last week, I was watching one of his videos that he was talking about. And this part came up. And of course, that's another pastor I, I was talking to. I went to Bible study, and he talked about that part. And I, I basically told him that, hey, um, that part is not what what the Bible says. But so far, we haven't had the time to talk about it. And I, and I, I think I, I think it is a, a common belief 
that they are teaching our pastors this part wrong. Instead of teaching the Bible, they just want to teach something that is opposite to what the rest of the world teaches, which is, I think is wrong. And so today we're going to look at, do you want to be taken or do you want to be left? Let's get into it. Luke chapter 17. We're going to start here first. And and Luke chapter 17. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lord's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it, meaning for the, for the gospel's sake. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. Okay, when it says two men in, two men in one bed, it's not that they are actually sleeping with each other. Basically, they are in the grave, basically. Like when you go to sleep, you go to the grave. The one shall be taken and the other one left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other one left. And if you look at this one, you say, okay, for sure, you want to be taken. You want to be taken. But of course, some people say, no, you want to be left. Which one is it? Well, let's get some. Remember we said we were going to uh, compare scripture with scripture? And so we're going to compare scripture with scripture. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew 24, from verse 37 to verse 41, we get this part now. And this will give us some more context. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the men be. For as in the days of that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall be two then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other one left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other one left. And so, what do we do as Seventh-day Adventists is this. We say, hold on, hold on. You see, actually, you don't want to be taken. You want to be left. Why? Because if you look at it very clearly, who were taken by the flood? Those that were dead. Right? And so, you don't want to be taken. Because if you are taken, you're going to be dead. But you want to be left alive. Because Noah was left alive. Which is true. Noah was left alive. Because the flood took them all away. But do you see the danger here? I'm talking to my, my fellow Seventh-day Adventists. Do you see the danger here? And this is what I dislike. What that we do. Many pastors... They always like to talk about, oh, let's go to the Greek word, or let's go to the Hebrew word and see what the word means. But when it comes to this part, nobody ever says, let's go to the Greek word and see what it means. Huh. Huh. Uh Uh-oh. I think they're going to kick me out of the church after this one. But it's okay. Let's go to the Greek word. To all the pastors that like to go and look at the Greek words, let's go to the Greek words and see what Jesus is saying here. Because this is Jesus now speaking. (laughs) But before we do that, 
let me tell you exactly why they they say you wanna be you don't wanna be taken you wanna be left it's not just because of that it's also because of this one i'm gonna show you what other verse that they quote that we as soon as we just record to mislead people and i don't think we do it on purpose i think because we we try to preach against the what is popular out there which is the left behind that taken away series thing this is the one with text also we will go to to actually tell people you don't want to be taken but left here isaiah chapter 28 we just said that earlier whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast for precept must be upon precepts precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear but the word of the lord was unto them precept upon precept Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go back and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Ha! There it is, Mario. There it is. If you are taken, you are snared. Yes, that's what we do. That's the verse we quote a lot. To say we don't want to be taken but left. That's what we do. Trust me. I also grew up in the church. So I know what we, what we actually use. This is the text. One, we say the flood took them. And so you don't want to be taken because the flood took them. Or by or, or in the sense, who were taken by the flood? It was those that were dead. So in the sense, you don't want to be taken. That's false. That is false. False. Two, we use this text to show that if you are taken, you are lost or you are snared. That's also false. Why? Because you have failed to look at the meaning of the words, the Greek word, what it means. And this is today why I'm going to bring that part out to show my people, hey, have you ever considered the meaning of the words let's see let's see taken in the concordance in the concordance and when i say concordance i'm talking about this one the strong the strong concordance okay it, it is it's a and I'm gonna tell what is what actually says. Is in um, a been a um no, a been done strong exhaustive concordance of the Bible, the only strong concordance with the words of Jesus Christ in red, and new easy to read print, with exclusive keywords comparison between the KJV, uh, RSV, NASB, NEB, NIV, JB, and all that thing. No difference. We can also look at other. Uh, actually, you know what? This one right here. I, I, I'm this one right here. I'm. I'm. Uh, this one on the screen. It, it doesn't come from this one. I get that one from the Strong's KJV, the Strong Concordance KJV, from Bible Hub. So I'm not just looking at any Strong's like this one, which can be for the KJV or other ones. I also looked at the one is specifically for the KJV because I know most of my people here we are KJV fan and so I decided to look at the KJV strong concordance uh, exclusively and I put it here and I compare it with this one that I have as well so the one on the screen is from the strong KJV and I'm comparing with this one right here and guess what? They are the same thing. Yes. Now, let's see what this is right here. 
So the, the number is 3920. And I'm talking about, and this word taken right here, I'm talking about this word taken is from Isaiah 28. Is that word right here? Is that word on the, on the screen that is uh, broken and snapped and taken? It is this word right here I'm looking at. Okay? So that word taken in the Hebrew is 3920. It means to capture, to seize, or to take. The word is lakad or lakad. And it means to capture, to seize, to take. And so, who want to be captured by Satan? Nobody. It's because this word right here, it means to, it, it, it means to, uh, is the word taken from, be broken and snared and taken. Nobody wants to be snared or taken by Satan. No. You want to be captured. God doesn't capture anyone. You make a willing choice. You choose to follow God. Satan won't try to capture you or seize you. Now. 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 I looked at the word taken or taken away throughout the whole concordance on this one that I have right here. And all those words together, it's the word taken and taken away. Okay? And if you notice, one of them is 3880. And that word 3880, that number 3880 is a specific word taken. Now, interestingly, I did the same for because you know we are compared, we are looking at taken or left from Matthew 24. So of course, I look at the word left. Verse 1441. I look at the word left. And that word, left, it appears that many times in the Bible. But if you see number 863, I highlighted and made it red. Just to let you know, this is the word from Matthew 24 and Luke 17. Interestingly enough, what do I find? The word taken appears 324 times in the Bible, meaning taken and taken away together. 257 times in the Old Testament and 67 times in the New Testament. Taken away appears 76 times in the Bible. 6 times in the Old Testament or 61 times in the Old Testament and 15 times in the New Testament. All the numbers that you just saw encompass all the words taken and taken away together. So in a sense, when you look at the word taken and taken away, um, the word taken and taken away, it, it, it's all together, basically. Right? It's all together. But the number 3880 for the term taken, only appears five times in the Bible. Five times in the New Testament, in a sense. Five times. And that number only appears in Matthew and Luke. And guess what verse it appears in? Taken or left. Three times in Matthew and two times in Luke. That word, third, that number 3880, appears five times. One shall be taken and the other one left. One shall be taken and the other one left. One shall be taken and the other one left. One shall be taken and the other one left. One shall be taken and the other one left. Five times. Now I'm hoping that I'm digging into so I can show you what's going on, my people. Yes, that's from, this is now for my people. Not for the whole world, but for my people, for the Seventh-day Adventist people, my people. Let's see. Now, we're going to compare the word taken away. Because you see, the word taken away actually is the number 142. The 
the number 142. And it, waits, and it means airo, to raise, to take off, to lift. Right? That's a Greek word. It means to raise, to lift up, to take away, to remove. Okay? To remove. And of course, we know that, we know that in Matthew 24, the flood took them all away. Well then, the flood, the, the flood basically, see, okay, here's the problem. Here's the problem again. I, I almost forget that part. Here's the mistake that we as Seventh-day Adventists we make. Oh, Lord, I don't see. You see, Jesus said in verse 24, actually, I'm going to go back over there. I, I need to go back on that one. I'm going to have to go back on this one. Because I have to show you guys what we do wrong. I have to show you that one, guys. This is just... Uh, this is just... I don't know. Why you do that? Okay. You see, here's the mistake that we also make. You see, Jesus said the flood came and took them all away. Jesus didn't say the flood took them. And so, the expression is taken away. The expression is taken away, not taken. And this is the big mistake that we make. We we just said the flood took them all away. We ignore the other part. We just say the, we just said the word took. No, the word is taken away. Took away. Took away. Took away. So in a sense, the the flood removed them. Actually. Let me see if I can go back to the part of Luke. Where is Luke? Uh, I need to go. I need to go to that part of Luke because I think he it had it somewhere here where I where I think it was mentioned pretty much um, right. Or was I looking at in a different part, in a different um, one? Ah, I can't seem to find it now. Okay, it's okay. We'll go back. We'll, 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 um, it's okay. And so, here's the thing. The word is not, the flood took them. The word is, the flood took them all away, or took them away, took away. And so we cannot just separate the two words, the word taken away. We cannot just say, oh, the flood took them. No, it's took away. We have to look for that expression. And that expression means, is the, is the number 142. And that expression means to remove. You see, taken away, take away, to remove. To remove. To remove. And I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to do something. Uh, I need to do that part actually. I'm going to do something here. So that I can so that I can show you what exactly is going on. Um, you know what? I'm going to do that afterward actually. I'm going to do that afterward. Afterward. I'm going to do that afterward. Now, let's look at the word taken. You know, one shall be taken and the other one left. Let's look at the word taken. Well, the word taken is the word 380. Ha! Do you remember that word? I have make sure to highlight it for you. 380. And it means to receive from. Boom. To receive from. Ha! Interesting. To receive from? What does that mean? Well, let's see what it means. The word is paralambano. It means to receive, I take from, I receive from, or I take to, I receive, or I admit, I acknowledge, I take with me. So basically, 
if we didn't have all the explanation of what happened in the day of Noah, Jesus said, basically, when the Son of Him come, there shall be two on the house top. One will be taken and the other one left. Basically, when I come again, I will take one and I will leave one. But you know, here's the question. Here's the question. Is Jesus coming to take people or is he coming to leave people? You might think it's a simple question, but it is a question. Is Jesus coming to take people or is he coming to leave people? Because I don't think Jesus is coming to leave anyone. He is coming to take his people from this earth. But because some people would do because some people do not want to go with him, they will be left. But Jesus' intention is not to leave anyone. Why? Because John 3.16 tells me, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, Jesus' plan is not that anyone should perish, but because he wants to save everyone, but because some people do not want to be saved, they will perish the same way. He is not coming to leave anyone. He is coming to take his people. But because some will not want to go with him, they will be left behind. I said it. They will be left behind. And in this case, we are seven Adventists. We are wrong. Those that are, that are believing in the left behind, they are right. They are also wrong in that part of taken away. Because you don't want to you don't, you don't be taken, not taken away. Because when you are taken, you are taken by Jesus. You are taken with Jesus. Don't worry. I'm ready for all the backlash. It's okay. But I still love you guys, my people. Let's let, let's keep let's actually keep going. Let's keep going. Now the term left. Remember, I made sure to also add that one. Eight sixty three. It means this. It means to send away, to leave alone, to permit. And so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You see, there is a flip side. In the time of Noah. Those that were taken, those that were taken away, they were dead. Those that were left, they were left alive. But in this case, those that are taken are alive. Those that are left are dead. <laughs> yes, they are dead. And that word "left" here means to send away. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. It means afiyami. It means to send away, to leave alone, to permit. Basing, I send away, I let go, I release, I permit to depart, I permit, I forgive, I, for, I, per, I permit, I suffer. Question. In Matthew 25, who does Jesus say, depart from me? Ha! <laughs> Mm -mm. Who does Jesus say? Those that were on his right, the sheep, he says, Come, enter into the jaw of thy Lord. And those that are on the left, he says, Of which are the goat, Depart from me, you who work iniquity. Who does he say to depart? Friends, if you are left, you are dead. Yes, if you are left, you are dead. If you are taken, you are alive. According to Matthew 24 and Luke 17. Actually, I'm going to also give you another version to make sure you know which one it is. Oh, my friend. And right now, I'm right now I'm only giving you the 
concordance word, not my word, the strong concordance, the KJV strong, to all my KJV aficionados, I'm one too. If you are left, you are dead because you are left behind. Let's, let's see. And as, we, as I was looking at the word left, the you know, uh, on the Bible Hub, which is the, I'll I, I go to the KJV version, Bible Hub, Strong Components from KJV. It gives you A, B, C, D, E, F, what the word means. And the, on, on the F part, on the F part, okay, on the F part, it means, it means to leave one by not taking him as a companion. So the word left, heal, the word, now remember, remember, I'm going to show you again. Um, That word here, that word here, paralambano, paralambano means what? It means to receive from, to take from. That's the word right here. Paralambano, that's the word right here. That word right here, paralambano, it means to receive from, to take with, to acknowledge, right? The word left that we are looking at on the same part, my 24, is the word afiyami, afiyami, which actually means to release, to depart, permit to depart. And as I'm, and as I am, as I am scrolling down to see what other meanings it has, the part F, part F. Basically says the word afeyami is opposed to paralambano, which means to leave one by not taking him as a companion. And I give you the verse Matthew 24 40 and Luke 17 34. So, question Do you want to be taken or do you want to be left? Friends, you don't want to be left. You do not want to be left. On Matthew 24, verse 40, and Luke 17, verse 34, you do not want to be left, my friends. You want to be taken. Let's keep on going, actually. Taken. And now, I, I used this one. Now, I used this one. Actually, what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, take the time to open it again. And then read it to you. Okay, here, from this one now. Okay, from this one. Here goes what you. Thirty-eight eighty. Here's what what it means. Paralambano. Okay. Okay. It means this. To receive new. Okay. To receive new. To associate with oneself. Right? It means to receive, to take onto, or to take with. And it also say, you can all, yes. So it basically means to receive new, meaning to associate oneself. And so, and then here, from the concordance on KJV, which is on the, on the uh, online, and this one is from this one. I just read from it right now. It means to receive near, to associate with oneself. So, who wants to be received near the Son of Man? Do you want to do that? Is it your desire? It is mine. Who wants Jesus to associate with himself? Who wants to associate himself with Jesus? I do. I do. So, yes, friends. To all my seventh day Adventist fellow brothers and sisters, you do not want to be left. You want to be taken. Actually, let's keep on going. See that right here? 
This is the word right here. Palambalo afeinati. Afe, afe tiny. And one is taken and the other one left. But remember I said I was gonna give you guys a different version, right? Listen to this. Remember we just looked at um, right here. It means to receive, right? To receive near and associate the word 3880, which is um, a, a paralambano. Okay. Now, let's look at this one. Let's look at it. And this is from the Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible. Let's look at this one. Matthew 24, verse 37 to verse 40. But as in the days of Noah were, so likewise shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they did eat and drink, marry and give him marriage, unto the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew nothing till the flood came and took them all away. <laughs> so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall be then two shall be in the fields, the one shall be received. <laughs> the one shall be received, and the other one shall be refused. <laughs> two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be received, and the other shall be refused. And so what, and why is it that we believe that those that are left, which are refused, are those that are Alive, no friend, they are dead. <laughs> those that are refused, those that are left, are dead. They are dead. Those that are taken, or those that are received, they stay alive because they go with Jesus Christ. Let's look at Luke chapter 17. After these things. Shall it, be, shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is one of the, one, after these things, after these examples, shall it be in the day when the Son of Man revealed? At the day, at that day, he that is in a, upon his upon the house, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it out. And he that is in the field, likewise, let him not turn back to that he left behind. Remember, love fight. My beloved's wife, whosoever will seek to save his soul shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose it shall give it, shall get it life, shall, shall get it life. I tell you, in that night there shall be two in one bed, the one shall be received and the other left. <laughs> How interesting. Now they actually use the word received and left. Isn't that even better? Now, do you want to be left or received? Hmm. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other one left. Two shall be in the field. The one shall be received and the other one left. And they answered and said to him, Where, well, Lord? Meaning, where are they left? Because they already know those that are taken or received, they are taken to heaven. They are going to go to heaven. But those that are left, where are they left behind? Where are they left behind? Where, where are they left behind, Lord? Where are they left behind, basically? So unto them, okay. Wheresoever the body is, theater shall the eagles be gathered together. So you cannot take your body to, to earth. You're already on earth. Did you catch that? Your body cannot be taken to the earth because we are already here on planet earth. You cannot be you cannot be only be taken to heaven. You your body can be left upon the earth. Ha I just thought about that right now, actually. Interesting. We are already on planet earth. So your body cannot be taken to the earth. It can be taken to heaven. Nobody can be left upon the earth. <laughs> my friends, my people, my people, 
my people my people you want to be taken you don't want to be left you want to be taken my people you want to be taken and i am open for criti criticism as uh, as always um if you find out something wrong let me know um for because from what i've known that my, from what i know i studied by myself without any other people i just looked at what the bible says thoroughly and i give you the version that we as seven day Adventists have been using which is the wrong version the wrong way of interpreting the bible of interpreting the bible we could we also we also are people we can we can also make mistake but in this case we were wrong and yes those that believe in the left behind they are right not that uh, not, not 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 in the not in the secret rapture part that's wrong but whether you want to be taken or left you want to be taken not taken away you want to be taken because i think the word taken away always meant something wrong if i'm not mistaken i think the majority of the time it was wrong thing it means it means you are dead basically but you want to be taken we want to be taken we don't want to be left friends um my name is mario and i thank you for watching this uh bible study on this topic that is very much prevailing in our churches and in the world if someone asks you do you want to be taken or do you want to be left i hope now you know that you want to be taken and not left i hope to see you on monday to continue with the book fundamentals of christian education with the chapter called the book of books which is the bible once then if i don't see you on monday i hope to see you again i hope to see you again when jesus christ comes the second time until then bye for now and happy happy sabbath Bye-bye.